Am I the a-hole for not forgiving my wife for kissing another guy even though she was suffering from PPD? My wife gave birth about one year ago and she changed. She was angry all the time, suspicious and paranoid of everyone. I think her mother filled her head against me. She would constantly accuse me of cheating, and mother-in-law and her would talk bad about me on the phone when I was not home. One day, she said she's leaving me and her mother was packing her stuff. She left with our daughter to her mother's house. Later that night, she called me and told me that she kissed a guy and asked me how it feels to be cheated on, accusing me again of being a cheater and how I betrayed her. I finally had enough and told her to not come back. Then she started blowing up my phone, and I refused to reply back or take up her calls. She did show up in our house after two days and ask me for help with her mental state. I took her to the hospital and she was diagnosed with PPD and was put on medication. She started slowly returning back to her normal self. I think she has healed and can manage by herself from now on, so it was the right time for me to divorce her. So I served her divorce papers a few days ago. She is not happy about it and begging me to not divorce her. She is blaming it on PPD. I understand that her head was messed up, but I don't tolerate cheating. If she had stabbed me or something, I would have forgiven her, but I just don't tolerate cheating. So, I am proceeding with divorce. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Her mom did not do her any favors. Tell her to talk to her mom about this. Yes, mother-in-law was living the stereotype. It infuriates me to think of a mother messing up a daughter's marriage and mental health like this. I've experienced this firsthand. It literally took 10 freaking years to repair all the damage. The symptoms you are describing, paranoia and delusions, do not fit with postpartum depression. They sound more like postpartum psychosis. This is very different and very serious. It can cause paranoia, delusions and hallucinations. Are you sure your interpretation of the diagnosis is correct? Years ago, when I worked in mental health, I worked with a social worker who had had to have a client section because she had visited and the client was oiling up the baby on a baking train about to put it in the oven because she thought it was a chicken. Postpartum psychosis. Well, mom certainly is toxic. I'm reminded of the Reddit story about a guy whose PPD wife was good friends with her neighbor. Neighbor poisoned the water there as well, told the PPD wife that the husband was a cheater. Coming home late, cheater. On the phone, cheater, etc, etc. Husband was not cheating. He was working more hours to save money and did everything he could to help PPD wife. Tried to get her meds. PPD wife became inconsolable over the cheating and left him and the baby. She eventually took her own life because of the lies of a toxic neighbor. Then toxic neighbor had the absolute gall to ask him if she could speak at a funeral. It was so sad. No, it was tragic. Just saying that your wife may be, or had been, in an easily manipulative state. Her mother is feeding her garbage about you. And perhaps that should be taken into account before pulling a trigger like divorce. Sounds to me like she kissed the guy to punish you, not to sleep with him. It's immature, but I don't consider it cheating. I've been cheated on, so normally I'd jump on a cheat wagon fast. But just be hesitant to divorce someone who isn't in their right mind, who someone they trusted implicitly was feeding them lies while they were in a depressive state, and did something that she would absolutely not have done if those things weren't in play. I mean, did you ever have any concerns about cheating before all this happened? If you value the marriage and family, it might be worth getting your wife to help she needs with her depression, go to counseling together, and then decide whether or not the marriage will work. Next story. Am I the a-hole for kicking my boyfriend at his kid out because his son was constantly scaring my baby on purpose? I was diagnosed with PPD, so I'm not sure if this is playing a part in my actions or not. I've been with my boyfriend for six years, and he has a 12-year-old son, Jake. I have owned my home for nearly 10 years now. They moved in two years ago. Our daughter is three months old. Now, Jake loves his sister. He's always holding her and trying to help. But there's been a massive issue since I had her with him purposely scaring her walking up to her and yelling raw. He thinks it's hilarious when she does startle reflexes and then laughs when she cries, saying, "Ah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare her like that, but continues laughing and continues purposely trying to scare her at least four times a day. Now, I have always told him to cut the crap. I've told him several times that he is hurting her ears. I've told him several times that is not funny. And then not even three days ago, I lost it entirely and told my boyfriend and him that if he purposely scared my kid again, then they would be evicted and gone from my constant life. I said this because while my boyfriend does correct his kids sometimes, he also tells me I'm overreacting. I said that it's natural for kids to think it's funny when babies get startled, and I simply don't understand because I've never been around multiple kids. His aunt has a half-brother and apparently did the same with him when he was a baby. But anyways, I lost it and threatened to kick them out. And in that moment, I truly felt like an a-hole because Jake looked sad and just went to his room. But like, 
Last night, I stepped out of the room for a minute, and my daughter was in her swing. Jake went to sit here, and when I was out of the room, I heard Jake, very loudly and fast, say, What are you doing? in a baby voice, and my daughter starts screaming immediately following. I heard my boyfriend take care of it. And then like an hour later, I went to the bathroom and the baby was in her seat. Then I heard Ra followed by the baby crying, yet again. So I told them to pack their stuff and get out now. I didn't wait for a response, because now I'm trying to calm down my baby. Jake tried apologizing and said it was a habit, and my boyfriend started protesting, saying it's not a big deal, and I just refused to acknowledge their excuses and told them to leave. My boyfriend sat down on a chair, said he wasn't going anywhere, and that this is his house too. So I said I would leave then and have a cop serve him an eviction notice. He tried begging me to calm down and kept saying, he's freaking 12, what do you expect? He's not going to be perfect. I left and this morning I filed for their eviction. Everyone thinks I'm being ridiculous here, but Jake refuses to stop and I'm tired of him purposely yelling in my daughter's face to scare her four plus times a day. Edited to add, I also have asked Jake why he does this and he has said he thinks it's funny when kids cry. Not the a-hole. Yes, he's 12. Old enough to know better and to not do it. Old enough to listen to instructions. Would he like it if you startled him every morning? No. He's 12 but he's being an a-hole and it sounds almost sadistic. Yeah, it will escalate when the baby is no longer scared by it. OP needs to protect herself and the baby at her home. I hope she sees this in case she starts backpedaling. That's exactly what I was thinking. If he thinks it's funny when babies cry, when she no longer jumps at his scares, will he do little things to hurt her in order to make her cry? Not the a-hole. Jake thinks it's funny to scare a baby and laughs when she cries. I would consider his behavior abuse, especially since he's been told numerous times to stop. Even after threatened with eviction, he still did it. It almost seems like a power trip to him, picking on a smaller person with the express intent of scaring them. It might be that he is jealous because he isn't getting all of the attention. Regardless, he needs help. And repeated trauma experience for a three-month-old baby startling them to tears multiple times a day is traumatizing, begins to program their brain. This level of early development is so, so crucial. The accidents we do as parents and family are enough to break them. Repeatedly being yelled at and startled by a random monster her brain has no means to process is a surefire way to mess up her development, permanently. The fact that the dad doesn't know that nor defend the baby from it, and like others have said, likely why is not with a second mother and baby in his role as a dad, is an unforgivable offense. Next story. Am I the a-hole for giving my children permission to defend themselves and ruining my brother's visit? My brother has two stepkids, 10 and 8, that are absolute brats. He is infatuated with their mother, though, so he will not discipline them. It's fine, because we do not see them much. Over the holidays, he came over with his family and the kids were horrible. My daughter, 11, and my son, 10, wanted nothing to do with them. So I gave them permission to go to their rooms and lock the doors to keep the peace. My brother and his wife started complaining because my kids were being bad hosts. I said it wasn't going to make my children unhappy to appease his. Eventually, my kids did come out to try and play together again. His kids started pushing my son around. He told them to stop, but they wouldn't. My daughter told them to stop bugging her brother, but they wouldn't. They came to us and told us what was going on, and my brother called them tattletales and told them to just go play and deal with it themselves. I asked him if that's what he really wanted. He said yes, let kids be kids. So, I took him to my daughter's room and pointed out that she had multiple belts and trophies for martial arts. Then I showed him my son's room, same thing. Then I went back to the living room and told my kids, in front of him and his wife, that they had my permission to defend themselves. He immediately called his kids over and told them to behave. Their mom was not pleased. She said that her kids were just having fun. And I said that my kids' idea of fun was probably a little more violent than hers. Long story short, they behaved for about 10 minutes and then they decided to test my kids. One black eye and an arm bar later, his kids are sitting on a couch while my brother and his wife yell at me for raising brutes. For the record, each of his kids, although younger, are bigger than my daughter, and they had multiple warnings to play nice. So, currently, there is a huge family fight because I let my kids beat up as innocent angels. Unfortunately for him, most of the people that have met his kids are asking what they did to provoke mine. My mom says that I should not have told my kids to defend themselves. I told her that she was welcome to host any and all gatherings that involved those brats. Last time they were there, they destroyed a stuffed animal that had the remains of her last dog. She doesn't like having them in her house either. Am I the a-hole? My mom says that I should not have told my kids to defend themselves. What kind of stupid nonsense is this? Instead of defending the kids who are being bullied and laying into your brother, she wants to further encourage the bad behavior? 
I wouldn't trust anyone around my kids who's defending the stepkid's behavior, and I'd make that known. Some people are so determined to keep the peace in the short term and avoid hard confrontations that they willfully blind themselves to problems that will cause long-term damage. Easier for mom to ignore the stepkid's bratty behavior and pressure other family members to do the same than have a hard discussion with her son about his and his wife's parenting, risking her relationship with said son in the process. I imagine that this isn't the first time OP's brother has thrown a fit to get his way. It has maybe threatened his mom with no contact if she didn't side with him in the past issues, while OP has historically been more measured. If that's the case, then mom is relying on OP being the reasonable party to OP's brother, as she'd prefer to keep a strained relationship with both her children rather than risk losing one, even if that means taking the blatantly incorrect side in conflicts between them, knowing that OP probably isn't going to escalate the same way that brother would. Not a hole. Always encourage your children to stand up to bullies, regardless of relation. Yep, this early lesson reaps lifelong benefits. Last story. Am I the a hole for leaving my husband's kids out of my will? I, 52 female, married John, 58 male, 15 years ago. When we met, he had been widowed for about three years and had two children from his previous relationship, Mark, 24 male, and Lisa, 22 female. I never met his first wife, and as far as I know, they were a happy family until an accident took her away. And John was devastated for almost a year until he started coming out of his shell. When I came into the picture, he was still heavily involved with his former in-laws, and had two young children as a young father under his care, so he was taking all the help he could from them, and they were his emotional support. I had no problem with that, and made it known to him that I would never try to come between him and any relationship that he and his first wife had created. When things became serious and I was introduced to his kids, they made it known instantly to me that I would never replace their mother and that they weren't particularly pleased with my presence at their home. I accepted that, and I, in agreement with John, decided that we would let our relationship advance slowly to let the kids adjust, and that I would never force myself as his stepmother or anything like that. And I didn't move in until they explicitly said it was okay, and we got married with her blessing. This process took years and family and individual therapy because both me and John wanted to make sure that we were respecting his kids' boundaries. The result is that we cohabitated, but I never parented them. I went to their school functions, cleaned for them, cooked, and we talked and had a cordial relationship. But I never disciplined them, never put rules on them, they never came to me to ask permission for anything or tell me their secrets or ask me advice, which was fine by me, that was what they wanted. And this time, I had two children myself, Kate 13 female and Laura 11 female, and the girls do have a sibling relationship with John's children. They've moved out in this time, and although I assisted some with their college expenses and such, also when they were growing up, I am no longer financially involved with them. This holiday season, John was talking about his retirement plan. He works in high-stress industry and has been saving up for early retirement and wanted to put his affairs in order to retire the next couple of years. He still assists his children with a bit of a monthly allowance, and he told them he would be cutting that to put that money towards his own savings. And they did not take it well. They looked at me and asked if I could continue their allowance since I own my business, and it's doing really well. And I said no. I do well for myself, but I'm not rich. And when John retires, I'll be the only income in the household. Plus, I'll have to save for my daughter's college fund, plus my own retirement. As the conversation of my finances followed, they tried to say that it was my responsibility to take care of them. And I was just taken aback by that statement because they explicitly told me many times, including recently not just as children, mind you, that I was just their father's wife, not their mother. So, I have absolutely no responsibility towards them in that regard. When she heard that, Lisa got angry and brought up the fact that she expected to inherit my business someday because she grew up with it. I told her in no uncertain terms that she and her brother were entitled to nothing of mine and certainly not my business which I built myself from the ground up since before I met their dad. They both got angry and left. My husband knew about all these arrangements well before all this, but is angry about how it all went down. It has been bombarded with messages about what a selfish witch I am since the argument, by his children and his former in-laws since New Year's, and even my daughters are mad at me now. So am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. They're not your kids, and you're not responsible for them. They themselves even made sure you knew this. They are rude and disrespectful, yet expect to be handed anything they want on a plate. You owe them nothing. If your business goes to anyone, it's your own daughters. Don't back down from this. They are not, never will be, and never have been your responsibility, which is what they wanted. But even my daughters feel like their siblings are part of this. I always felt like they as kids should put the boundaries and I shouldn't be the one overstepping. But now everyone is turning on me? I don't know if I really did something wrong.
Your daughters had a different relationship with them than you, so it's understandable that they feel differently than you. They got to experience a sibling relationship with them while you were repeatedly told you're not family. You didn't do anything wrong. With how entitled these kids are acting now, I don't know if you should just give in anyways, but it's up to you and how you want to settle this argument. I just feel kinda bad, because I'm always reading in this forum about awful step-parent trying to force blended families and erase previous familial situations. And I always felt myself so superior by how I handled things and how I never let the memory of my husband's previous wife faded my household and the relationship of my daughters and their siblings. Now I feel like it's all going to the crapper. And maybe if I had done something different and tried to be more involved with John's children, we wouldn't be on this situation or something? I don't know. I am very confused and frustrated at this moment.